In this video, you're gonna see Pakistan's most shockingly strange exotic meats. I cannot believe someone would come here and just get this. Right now, we're in the mega city of Lahore. I'm in Pakistan, baby. A city of over 11 million. Really, nighttime is when this place comes to life. And here, street food is king. Oh my God, delicious. Today, I'm on a mission to hunt down the body parts. The feet are full of tiny bones. The offcuts. Oh my gosh. The ovals. This is like game on game. All cooked up in unique ways to create some startling mouth magic. It's like when your life flashes before your eyes, except for it was this goat's life was flashing through my mouth. It all starts with a hearty breakfast. Good morning from Pakistan. It is day two. We're back at it. And we're starting with a pretty tricky breakfast. Pretty much before the sun comes up, people are coming here for this. This pot is filled with goat heads, split into three parts, the brain, the cheeks, and the tongue. I've never seen it displayed this way, but it makes sense. It's early morning, you can't handle a whole head, so you can choose which head part you want. This heady meat has been stewing in red chilies, cumin, lemon, and liquid smoke since 4 a.m. this morning. Can I see that? All right, cut number one. This is where? Uh, Here? Cheeks. Jinx. Meet the man behind the meat, Mr. Honey. He's been cooking goat heads here at Al Sahat Corner Temple since 1963. All right, goat cheeks right here. I don't know if it's both cheeks or one cheek. I do see a dimple though. That's nice. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here is the tongue. But honestly, it's more than the tongue. Every muscle that comes along with it is in there too. It's gonna be juicy and juicy. Mm. There's one more part here. Oh, take a look. It's brain for breakfast. But he's gonna open it up for us. So he takes a knife, he finds the exact right pain points. Olive. Yes, just like taking out some bone marrow, he's pounded out the brain. It looks like if you ride a motorbike with no helmet. In Pakistan, nobody wears a helmet on their bike. It's gonna be like them. Guys, wear your helmet or um, that's you. This is brain for breakfast. It is one of the most unique breakfasts I've seen anywhere. I love that when people wake up here, they just go metal. This is hardcore early morning food. It's heavy, it's interesting, unique body parts, and I can't wait. Have you ever had brain this early in the morning? Of course, I'm from Lahore. To explore Lahore's most unique meat offerings, I've enlisted the help of a local chef, Rabia. So is this a common thing even for ladies? It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. Lahoris love heavy breakfast. Let's jump into it. So we have some bread, we have three different cuts of head. On the side here, buttermilk. What is buttermilk? Buttermilk is a fermented dairy drink. Here, they mix it with sugar and beat it until it becomes thick and delicious. Oh, the cream is literally rise to the top here. That is so good and so heavy. Well, we're just getting started. Oh, that's delicious. Starting with cheek. I'm trying to figure out what these bunny ears were. That's the mouth. So I'm literally holding it by the lips right now. It is saying, don't eat me. Get some of my juice in your mouth. <laughs> so try it out. Mm. Oh, that's very nice. It's very pleasing. It has a nice mouth feel. That's something people say who review food. Nice what feel? Oh. <laughs> Coming up next, we have tongue. This is what I mean, like it's not just the tongue. It's also all this connective tissue behind the tongue. That stuff is delicious and it's different than the tongue itself. Cheers. That's interesting, good flavor, but you do have to proceed with caution because there are a lot of bones in there. And I thought it was just shattered fragments, maybe from the guy who axed this down, but no, it just happens to have a lot of little bones in the back of the tongue area. This is the tongue itself. The tongue has no bones. I'm gonna peel it open and reveal that soft goat pate inside. Try it out. Mm. Not gamey at all. Clean, but cold, like a heavy taste. Oh, that's yummy. Let's move on to the brain. This is the skull that's holding the brain. I think I can just remove it by hand. I'm gonna tap it and see it just leak out onto the bread like it's giving birth. That is a lot of brain. Cheers. Mmm, it's so creamy. First it tastes like brain, but then it gets really livery. Very heavy, but it has some nice flavor to it. I think maybe I just put on a smidge too much. I'm gonna have one more and I'm gonna reduce the brain matter. Give that a dip. Mm -hmm. Genuinely enjoyable, I love it. 
How long have you lived in Lahore? Well, I'm originally from here, but I grew up in the Philippines, but I've always had a connection to Lahore. We've been coming here every year my entire life, and I've returned back from the last two and a half years. When you came back to live here full time, what do you notice that people from here don't notice about the city? So I came in as a chef. So over here, what I find is the food is very meat focused, but highly balanced as well. And people genuinely care a lot about their relationships with each other and their relationships with food. So that is something that I think goes unnoticed over here because people are so just used to being themselves. But someone coming from the outside will notice that hospitality really well. If that breakfast didn't do it for you, next up, an underappreciated awful offering prepared by chefs who are good with their hands and good with their feet too. Ali, I'm still in Pakistan. Today, I'm focused on some of the more exotic, unique foods featured in the city of Lahore. As I travel around the world, I really enjoy looking for the foods that some might consider exotic because it always has a story that comes with it. But we're also in a country where people eat just halal food. So most of the food is gonna be not so many lizards and reptiles and bugs. Can you think of anything here that is a bit out of the ordinary, especially for a Westerner? This is Ali. I call him the unofficial ambassador of Pakistani food, and he's the whole reason I'm here. When it comes to food, we Pakistanis are very efficient. Every organ is used to prepare the food, so that you can call exotic. One interesting thing about it is that whichever organ you eat, your own organ is gonna get strengthened. So, for example, if you eat goat feed, probably gonna run marathons. What about the testicles? Uh, again, a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything in Lahore that was too strange or unique for you? I haven't tried goat's stomach yet, and you will try it, so you are about to know more about Lahore than me even. Here, they have a very unique cut of meat. You don't find it everywhere you go, but they specialize in this somewhat strange off-cut here. Could you pick these up for me? Yes, get a load of that. These are two goat stomachs. They are huge. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a sniff. Offensive. This is one of the hardest ingredients to cook with because it is so incredibly gamey. Some people don't like goat meat itself because they consider that gamey. But this is like game on game. But soon, hopefully, they're going to work their magic here. It looks like they know what they're doing. The dishes they're preparing already, they look delicious. So let's see what they can do with this. <laughs> After the stomach is cleaned, it must be cut down to size. And if your hands are full, you could always use your feet. Is goat stomach a common ingredient found in restaurants here in Lahore? This is Zishan Ahmed, head chef here at Arif Restaurant. Not so much, but definitely it's one of those dishes that people make at home really well. The cut down portion stomach is moved to a giant cauldron of garam masala, a spicy broth made from cinnamon, cumin, fenugreek, garlic, onions, and tons of oil. What is good about the stomach? It's really good for your liver and it has really great health properties. That's why people enjoy it a lot. Which is good because I I drink way too much. Will it help for then? Nice. After six hours of stewing, it's ready for the next step, where it sizzles on a skillet with ginger, black pepper, and coriander. The tough part about the goat stomach is the taste is very powerful. So, do you try to cook that taste out of it, or do you embrace that taste? Orchidy basically is To erase that flavor that is not that enjoyable, these guys wash it upwards of 15 to 18 times. That's really what it is. Whenever you have any kind of off cuts, it's about treating that really well and with respect. So I see that happening over here. All right, I'm excited. I can't wait to try this. This out. Flipping goat stomach. Yeah, we're really going hard today. And how was it like for you seeing somebody cut with their foot? I think it's good to have three appendages at work. Otherwise, you can only cut with two hands. Yeah. I hope in the bathroom it says employees must wash hands and, and feet. Don't count on it though. <laughs> we have it here. It looks good. Thank you. Is it just none? It's not none. So it's a non none. No. <laughs> I'm gonna start with just stomach. Try it out. Oh. I like that way more than I thought I would. I like it too. Oh, it's spicy. It's spicy. I like the spice. Yeah. The goatiness is still there, but the way they seasoned it, it's like they're working with that flavor. And it's not overpowering, but it does blend with the other flavors in there. And a lot of the flavors that they put in, they're very conscious about which flavor comes when into your mouth. So you have the warm spices first filling up, then you get the meat flavor, then you're left with the spice. So each bite is a whole experience. And that comes through a lot of like education that these guys have doing the work that they do. I can see they really take pride in the food. All the steps they went through here. I'm really impressed. 
This is Lahore. This city goes back centuries, and evidence of its history can be seen and felt everywhere. This is the capital of the Punjab province. It's also the second largest city in this country. The clatter and clamor, the pure raw energy, takes me back to cities like Dhaka or Amritsar. The difference is in the details. Henna dyed hair, Muslim skull caps known as takia. The call to prayer five times a day echoing out from the city's tremendous mosques. Just at the point of overwhelm, you can always sink your complete focus into the next street food stall you cross paths with, like this place. You know, we had the head, and I felt like we were missing some balance earlier. Now we've got the feet. There is perhaps no food more commonly eaten in Pakistan than goat meat, from its head to its stomach, all the way down to its feet. And you'll be amazed what can be done with such a humble ingredient. That's a hook. That's why uh, these creatures have such good grip. This is goat paya. Paya means legs in Urdu. Once the goat trotters are hacked off and thoroughly cleaned, hundreds of them are piled high in giant cauldrons and braised for hours in a rich, spicy broth. The feet are full of tiny bones. I mean, look at this. What is going on here? Is there any meat in here? That's my main question. Not really. You really just focus on the broth more than the bones and the meat itself. You want to grab a little trotter? Really ambitious. <laughs> My gosh, this is so rich. It's flavorful, but I cannot believe someone would come here and just get this. It is just pure fatty collagen with a delicious broth, but I couldn't fill up on just pure fatty collagen. That is wild. All right, a little bit more. Let me just combine it with the bread. Yeah, yeah. Almost every restaurant in Lahore makes their own bread, fresh on the spot. One of my favorite things about Pakistan so far is that almost every restaurant we've gone to has had their own bread-making station, so you're getting it super fresh. Here, Mr. Mohammed Tahir is in charge of the tandoor. Right now, he's making a really unique type of naan that I've only seen here in Pakistan. He's rolled out some of the dough, and then he uses this press. He presses it really hard, and it's going to create this beautiful texture on the final product. But then next, this is the most magical part right here. He hits the dough with some sesame seeds, puts it on the pillow, and then puts it in the tandoor. One thing you should pay attention to, anytime you see a tandoor man, look at his arm. It will be completely hairless. I learned this when I was in India because I tried putting in the bread myself that burnt off all my arm hair. His right arm has no hair. His left has hair. It's a mismatch for ladies. Maybe it's like an alternative form of hair removal. Try it out. So some of the first ones he put in are already freaking done. My man, can you treat my hands as the basket? Yes, I got it. I can handle it. Woo. Not too hot for me. Break off a piece. I mean, this is why they call it breaking bread. Cheers. Oh yeah, that's a good stuff. Piping hot, very toasty, and delicious on the inside. Thank you. All right, I got some inside the bread. Nice dipping action. So much cumin and cardamom, like overload. A lot, a lot of spice. I've never had a broth like this. It's so strange. It's almost milky, you would say, you know, because mm -hmm. of everything inside it. Right. You're like, I can't scrape the oil away to get into the curry. No. It's all emulsified into one. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. I love the flavors, but man, that is so rich and heavy. What kind of food are you serving here? Because I looked at the menu on the wall and it looks like it's wide ranging. You have a tower zinger burger, you have the zinger wrap, also, you have goat testicles. Are those in the same category? Basic food, Jonah. Welcoming us to his street food kingdom, Mr. Syed Azim Shah. He wants to cater to all kinds of people. Before, the street food was this stuff, and now the mood is changing into fried stuff. So he wants one place that sells everything. This place has it all, from modern comfort foods to more adventurous options, including something they call... Taka -taka. Ka -ka How do you say it? Taka -taka. Oh, taka -taka. Taka -taka. Taka -taka. Taka -taka. Katakat or takatak is an iconic dish seen and more often heard throughout Pakistan. If you took 8th grade poetry class, you'll know that takatak is an onomatopoeia for this sound. 
two karahi spatulas, dancing over the tawa, slicing and dicing any organs that enter its path, while enticing passerbys with a familiar sound. It's one of those things that is like a street favorite around Lahore, but as you can see throughout the street, everybody's cooking on the front. So it's a really good showcase of like, here's what I can do, and that's why it's so popular. All right, well, we're about to indulge on a lot of different organs here. Can you give me a little organ tour? So we have the goat testicles over here, the brain, the heart as well, and uh, lamb ribs as well. Do people pick one or do they mix them all together? Add you wish. And what do you usually go with? I go with the mutton champ. I kind of keep it a little kosher, but today I'll be a little bit adventurous. I'm sorry, did you say kosher? <laughs> I don't think many people are keeping a kosher here. Our taka talk starts with goat brain, ribs, heart, and testicles slid onto the hot griddle. Add water and let it cook a bit. Using his trusty putty knives, he eviscerates these mutton meats, making them unrecognizable. Add ginger, salt, and more water, then steam. On the side, he prepares a tomato paste, green chilies, caraway seed, black pepper, and more. Combine the paste with the meats and add yogurt. Finally, add about 13 cubes of butter for good luck. More ginger, coriander, green chilies, and cream. Check it out, our last meal. He daka daka the heck yeah. out of this. He put a lot of butter in there. And now you can see there is a reservoir right here of just butter. Let's dig into this. The bones still have some meat on them. Very little, yeah. We can pull it out and you can go for it. Oh, I am wrong. The bone has some bone attached. I will put that to the side. What do I do? This is like a tortilla. These are patli rotis. They're really thin and they're very, very large. You get a big piece and then you go in. This is such a mixture of everything. And I'm gonna just do the buttery. Really? Yeah, why not? Yeah, you only live once and you only die once too. Who cheers? Oh. A lot going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, my brain is trying to organize what is what in there because I'm getting little glimpses of everything. Yeah, I'm so glad that it's not like homogenized into one minced meat thing. You can actually get a lot. It's like when your life flashes before your eyes, <laughs> except for it was this goat's life was flashing through my mouth. And I was like, ooh, is that a testicle? And then there was a heart. And then the brain comes through the most because it offers this really congealed, mm -hmm. sticky, fat creaminess that binds That's it all together. Thing. And it tastes a bit livery too. Now, this is something that you're not going to find everywhere in the city because it is a real street food. If you go to a more modern restaurant, do they do a version of this? Yes, they do do versions of it, but you will not get this variety of meat over there because not everyone is open to it. And I think if you come to a place like this to have it, then you will crave it more. Taka Tuk generally is a very easy way to get into all of these exotic meats. Yeah, absolutely. It is a feast for your mouth, but also for your ears and for your eyes. You get to see all these foods come together, but then yeah. you get a little music action too. This has been an awesome day. I want to say thank you so much for joining me. I really enjoyed it. I'm really glad that we're giving the attention to places like these and to meet like this because sadly this is a dying art and we need more people that are interested in the food and you're not even from here and you've enjoyed the food so that speaks volumes about the potential of this kind of dishes. Trying out foods like this, for me, the most fun part is having my expectations challenged. Feeling one way about goat stomach, thinking there's no way this can work and then seeing it just be incredible. And that's what today was the whole day. So I loved it. A lot of new experiences. I feel like each day I'm learning more and more about Pakistan and Pakistani cuisine. The Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. They're really doing a good job here because you don't taste like this has that much butter in it. Hold on, you call that a good job? Here's what I would call a good job. There's almost no butter and it tastes like a lot of butter. <laughs> we taste and make sure everything is good in the morning. This is the most magical part right here. He takes his magical cooking pillow. Oh, he says, go on this side. No brain got on you. That's pretty good. That was a no brainer. <laughs> <laughs> That is the end of video two here in Pakistan, our last video in Lahore, and from here, we're going to the countryside, right? 
Oh yes, and the flavors and the food and the pace of life all is going to change, but for good. Change for good, meaning forever. <laughs> no, we mean forever. <laughs> like, oh, for the best. For the best, yeah. <laughs> I want to say a huge thank you to Ali right here. He is the reason we are in Pakistan. He's given us incredible tips, advice, and access to places we never would have been able to go to without him. So, my man, thank you so much. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace. Peace. Yeah, you nailed it that time. See, every time you're getting a little bit better.